from the computer and good morning my friend Liz how are Hi. you today how's I'm your great. how are awesome. you I am doing awesome um, well as we spoke before um, I'm a little thrashed in a good way because I just did a killer workout That's awesome. um, yeah yeah it was good Rachel's on hey Rachel um, so Hi, good, morning. Hey. good morning hold on one second Liz I gotta get a show set up for this little guy here you can't see him because my back screen um, oh, okay <laughs> you want to do it just a quick little rundown of what we're going to be talking about today i can still hear you i, I commandeered yeah. my, my son's headphones so yeah. i'll mute myself you get it going i'll get him set up okay yes yeah. so today for welcome to mindset monday everybody um this is now our third installment i uh, hope that you guys are are enjoying all this where tim and i get on here and and basically um throw around a, a main overlapping or underlying theme that we're going to talk about throughout the course of the 45 minutes to hour we have together. Today, what we're going to talk about specifically is negotiating with ourselves, with our goals, and with our dreams. So um, really looking at this from a perspective of when we have goals or, or things that we're looking to accomplish, um, what are we willing to um, negotiate those against? So how strong are we um, embedded in, in what we want to go after? And um, what are we willing to um, give up or, or trade off for that to go after what we really want at the end of the day? Beautiful. And I think we all negotiate one way or the other. And I think we've all yeah. been there when the alarm goes off and especially if you're getting started, if you're yeah. just getting started and let's say it's day one, right? And the alarm goes off and you're not, you don't have those habits instilled yet. The negotiation starts and you say, hmm, what reasons do I have to not start today? Oh, maybe I didn't sleep so good. Or maybe the kids got me up a couple times. Or maybe whatever that excuse is. And you start the negotiation and you're kind of, it's, it's like the conversation between the proverbial little angel on one shoulder and the little devil on the other shoulder. And, um, saying, ah, you know what, the devil's saying, ah, you know what, let's start tomorrow. Let's start tomorrow. Tomorrow is the killer of so many dreams and goals and ambitions. Tomorrow never comes because today is always today. And I think if you, and then there's the other angel on the side saying, you know what, you gotta, you gotta do it. You said you're going to do it. Let's get up. And then if that, the angel yawns and says, you know what, but I am kind of tired. You lost the negotiation. It's over. Yeah. You're, you're hitting snooze. You're going back to bed and you're, you're waiting yet again for tomorrow. So for me, it's kind of saying, putting myself mentally in a place where I've already completed whatever that thing is. That's how I negotiate with the little devil. I, I, I put in the devil's head like, but yeah, but remember how good it felt the last time you did what you said you were going to do. Even as, so let's just get out of bed, make the coffee and put our workout clothes on or open up the project and get working on it or whatever it is um, that you got to do. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so um, I, you know how I look at it, Tim, and, and I know that you'll, uh, this is totally dorky, but you'll, you'll, uh, this will resonate with you. So opportunity cost, if we go back to econ and, and econ 101, cost. baby, yeah, I love yeah. it. Yes. <laughs> the opportunity so, cost. Yeah, right. So um, opportunity cost basically is 
a benefit that you're missing out on or giving up when, when you have two alternatives to choose. Um, to, in, in economics, you're basically looking at like wealth or, or resources, but you can apply this to anything and that's how I'm looking at it. You're going to, no matter what decision you make, it, there's going to be a, a cost or a benefit from not making that other decision. So um, always weighing that option as to which benefit is going to serve you better. So let's unpack this a little bit because I, I yeah. love I love that you said that the opportunity <laughs> cost. Um, so for example, all right, I've got my kid, all right, saved up a hundred bucks, all right, mm -hmm. saved up a hundred bucks and wants to. So we set up um, a while back, uh, just basic custodial Schwab trading accounts, cheapest platform you can trade on. And they started buying some index funds, um, low cost to, to, to doing that, but they're starting to grow. So he saves up a hundred bucks, wants to buy a video game or some gaming thing, like a wireless headset or something like that. <laughs> For you to go steal. <laughs> exactly. Um, or he could, put that into an index fund, hundred bucks. So a hundred bucks at whatever percent they're growing at over 25 years, the cost value of money or the time value of money. Um, the opportunity cost of that hundred dollars, if he buys the gaming thing or whatever trinket or doodad he wants to spend a hundred bucks on could be quite substantial in 20 years or so. Absolutely. But where the, the, the real concept of opportunity cost comes in, which they, I, I was a huge um, student of behavioral economics because traditional economics says people are rational, which is horseshit. People are not rational. <laughs> people are not rational beings. Um, people are, you know, a lot of times caught up in immediate gratification. So if you can tie the delayed gratification in with the opportunity cost, then you'll get something worthwhile having, but it's going to take a while. And it's building that discipline muscle, doing the same thing over and over and over again and investing that time because time is like money, except you can't ever earn more time back. Right. But you can invest your time, you can waste your time, or you can spend your time. So wasting time for me is, is sitting around watching Netflix by myself, binge watching Netflix. Okay. Now, I'm not saying Netflix is a time waster. Now, an investment in time for me may be sitting around watching something like a really good, interesting, well thought out, factual documentary. Okay. That might be an investment where I'm actually learning. It could be me and my wife sitting together, having a glass of wine, eating some popcorn, watching Vikings together, our, our show, you know what I mean? And that's that's yeah, yeah. not binge watching, but just, just that connection time. Fine. Exactly. Um, spending time is like cleaning, okay? You gotta do it. It's an expenditure. So those things we should really try and get as done as quickly and efficiently as possible. The time you spend, all right? It's transitioning from task to task. And then the investment is exercise, meal prep, learning, um, spending time with other people that are going to help propel you towards your goals, not pull you down. So we're kind of going down a little rabbit hole, uh, which we tend to do sometimes, but um, it's all relevant to the opportunity cost of um, of that time or the decision we're gonna make, Liz. That was freaking brilliant. Thank you. Because oh, I wasn't even thinking about the opportunity. I haven't. In fact, I haven't thought about opportunity cost. I mean, I guess I kind of do when you you know every once in a while you're you're like, what what could I do with this time? But um, but that that negotiation starts. So I guess thinking about the long term winning, I guess. We'll go back to the, the premise of this whole um, discussion we're having today on negotiating with yourself. 
And a lot of times you find yourself negotiating about whatever it is. Maybe it's not even getting up. Maybe it's like, geez, do I eat this? Do I stick with my meal plan or do I order out or grab whatever they brought in for the break room? And it's having that discipline to think about the opportunity cost. And a lot of times, here's, here's what I think about. I say, I try to break it down, especially when it comes to nutrition, and I'm not always perfect at it, but I try to break it down in burpees. I say, geez, I wonder how many burpees it would take to burn that off. That's an awesome analogy. Yeah. And if you can think about things like that, you might say, maybe, I mean, if you I love burpees. So you know what? <laughs> I, I incorporate them in every single workout I do. I mean, even if they're not in the programming and I'm working out with you in the morning, I will just throw some burpees in there between whatever movement. <laughs> I'll just, just a pack of it. <laughs> but, um, it's, um, but still, if you think about whatever movement you hate, I mean, I, I guess I should probably, I mean, I don't hate, mo- mobility is not my strong suit. That's why I don't like it. But if I say, geez, how long would I have to stretch to burn off these calories? Maybe I should think about it that way. But <laughs> No, very good. I, and I finished, we just finished up the Atomic Habits book. And we're moving on to why we sleep. And don't let me forget to, uh, we're going to add some announcements. We got some big stuff happening um, this weekend in six weeks. There's some really big stuff happening that I don't want to forget to talk about. So I'll make a note about that. But but we can save that for the end. Um, I kind of did a reset on my life. Um, I, I do, every once in a while I get stuck and I'm like, changing little habits is good. And a lot of times that works, but sometimes I have to, I'll start falling into a rut and I just have to do a hard reset and wake up. So last, not this past, but last Sunday morning, I just woke, I set my alarm and said, I am getting up at five and I'm getting after it. I am rewriting my book and and all the stuff that I said, I'm not going to go through quarantine without this being done. And I just started doing it and stuck with that routine took friday night off had a few drinks at happy hour a few too many saturday was kind of a wash recovery day just hanging out with the family ordered out having dinner whatever sunday right back at it so it's a six-day week i don't take a two-day weekend um and i got so freaking much done this week uh the, the workouts have been awesome the hydration has been on point the nutrition is getting better i calculated my macros starting to plug them in, meal prep, tracking, um, things like that. So sometimes for me, but the the problem, the the trap I fell into with that previously was looking at, and I kind of talked to you about this before we, we started the call. I looked at all of my goals, uh, all those little habits as links in a chain. Okay. Which, um, not at the time, but in hindsight, um, this is how I, I was using that. And each little goal was a link in a chain. So if one of those things broke down, if I had a bad day and didn't read, if my hydration wasn't on point, if you know one or two of those little links broke, the whole chain fell apart. It did just fall to the ground. I'm like, shit, it didn't work. And I was back to school, like that all or nothing mentality. What I had to do is shift my mindset and look at all those little healthy habits that we like to instill as a set of stairs. Okay. So I'm walking up the stairs. I miss one of the steps and you know, I, I stayed up too late. Didn't get, get, get enough sleep or I didn't do whatever that was. Okay. I got to jump a little bit higher now to get to the next step and use that discipline to keep pushing forward but I'm still going up the stairs and all is not lost. So I think um, kind of changing the mindset now because the last two weeks have not been perfect. They haven't. There's been days when I've been off on hydration. Nutrition was a little bit off. Um, You know, it cut a little one of the workouts short because something was going on, you know, but for the most part that then, but I, I just looked at the list. I said, okay, what's next? What's next? And 
got after it, as Jocko says. So awesome. that's where I've been at the last couple of weeks. It's been going great. Awesome. That's awesome. What do you think? Um, what do you think what helps you besides? So the opportunity cost, you go through the opportunity cost. That's how you win your negotiations. And by win negotiations, I mean, um, do the right thing. Yep. So as cliche as it all sounds, I, I really think it all relates back to having that rock solid, bulletproof, negotiation proof why as to why you're doing what you're doing. And I know we talk about that all the time, but that's why this is, that's why your why is so important because you need to, when you're presented, I guess, with that decision and you're looking at the opportunity cost, which of the two options is more aligned with your why. And that's how you want to try to make your decision. Because again, you're not always going to be motivated. And um, like you were talking about, day one can often be the hardest, or sometimes day two is the hardest. Maybe sometimes day one, you're all in. You're, you joined Fit Body Boot Camp yesterday. You're excited to get going with your workout. And then the next morning, you wake up, and guess what? This was a shock to your body. You're a little bit sore. <laughs> Maybe you're not feeling as motivated today to um, get after your, your workout. So I think the motivation can can come or go but that's where we need to um build that discipline muscle of relating it back to our why and weighing the opportunity cost against what's going to propel us towards that love it the why and we we gloss over that sometimes i mean we don't yeah. gloss over but sometimes it gets kind of lost in the fray like oh you gotta have an important why what is it be if you can be really be real like the why and that why can evolve. So Absolutely. when I was younger, my, I wanted to look, I wanted to work out to look good to meet girls. And now I want to stay fit and trim so I don't have a heart attack. <laughs> Cause I'm 42, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to die. Um, so uh, you, the, the why can evolve, but I think as long as you're real and, and if I'm being real with myself, I still want to look good. You know, I, I want to look fit and trim and healthy. Um, and that's, um, but I think the most important part is being real with yourself, with the whys, really being real with yourself as to what that is and why you're doing it. And then, Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and I think that it, it, um, yeah, I think evolving is uh, your why evolving is almost necessary because what motivates you when you start may wane later, later on. So, um, like if we think about the, the summer, it, it, that is something we probably all want to try to look good in, you know, in, in the summer. And maybe our, we're, we're very good about getting our workouts in as summer is approaching and in the warmer weather, but we also need something that's going to motivate us to get our workouts in when it's in the middle of winter and it feels better just to, you know, I, I keep going back to just the decision as to whether or not to, to wake up and work out. Um, but you need something that's still going to fire you up to um, get yourself up and, and moving towards that workout when, you know, summer is, is ages away at this point. So I think it's very natural and healthy for it and, and helpful for it to evolve as well. Um, to thinking more about just how it makes you feel um, intrinsically when you work out. That's kind of what, where, same thing with you. I think I, I started with wanting to look my best and then it just became more about how I feel if I don't get my workout in. And that became more of my, my why. That's more longstanding. Yeah. So in other words, what you're saying is telling people buy the bathing suit put it on, <laughs> see how you look and say, okay, this, how do I want to look in this bathing suit? Um, because yeah, summer's coming. It's not going to be canceled. That is true. Um, one thing you said, all right, so it's day one of boot camp. super motivated, super excited. Um, 
All right, so maybe not. So it's day one after your first workout. So maybe you like sat in the parking lot and I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people tell me, sat in the parking lot, holding on the steering wheel with a death grip, afraid to get out of the car, but something made them come in. Something made them walk out onto that mat and do their first workout or just log on. If you're brand new with us after this whole COVID thing started and you are logging on and you're doing your first workout in your living room. Um, and after that, you feel awesome and you're ready to get after it the next day, but the next day you're a little sore, but you still feel awesome. And like that first couple of weeks, super motivated. What if it's, what if it's day 200 of boot camp for you? And maybe it's getting, uh, you're like, you know, we try to keep as, as hard as we can, or maybe it's day 200 of meal prep or staying hydrated or doing the same healthy habits. Um, and you don't want to the, the book, the, the, one of the biggest things and Sarah brought this up in our book group meeting. Uh, I think it was Sarah that brought it up or Beth, but they brought up the fact that the people that are most successful are the ones that can deal with the boredom of training. So we try not to, saving money is boring. Yeah. <laughs> For me anyway, I mean, it's boring. It's good, it, but, but after a while, it's really nice to see that savings grow. But man, I tell you, going and doing something, like spending money is way more fun for me than saving it. <laughs> and, you know, eating, going to the Chinese buffet is way more fun than not for me. And that's my own character. Like you hear me talk about the Chinese buffet a lot, but day 200 of the training program in the nutrition program as an athlete or anything trying to better your life can get boring after a while. And it's the people that can, stick with that and continue on to because it's not going to be boring forever that's just your mindset that's just you saying having a bad day or whatever and that's why we're always trying to change up the formatting change up do as much as we can um sprinkling some new equipment and um hopefully provided things go well um not making any promises but there might be a couple new pieces of equipment when the gym opens back up um that we're not going to announce till we actually have in hand but um we're working on that so but just adding adding things to keep it exciting but sometimes you wake up and you're like oh man i gotta do this again and it's like sometimes it's like a relationship i mean don't tell alicia i said this but sometimes you, but no i mean I'm, I'm glad we're married but sometimes you're like i'm still in this relationship but that's when the choice comes in of you know, love is a choice. Dedication is a choice. Um, your why is a choice. Chasing your goals is a choice that you have to make. And that's part of that negotiation of doing the right thing. So um, go, falling in love with the process, I think. Because I think the process if you can enjoy the process a lot of times we look at whatever that we start something we look at the destination yeah all right we say i want to be here but if you can start enjoying the actual process of what it takes to become the person you want to be i think that is um i think that's huge yeah and I think that's kind of going back to where that why evolves. Like if we start out um, with something that's a little more, um, I don't know, um, a little more tangible, like I just going back to the fact that I, I want to look good and then we start to look at that on a deeper perspective. I think that's where that why evolves in a, in, in a healthy way and serves us um, better when we're weighing our, our options in terms of what's going to add value 
towards my life and in achieving a more um, underlying why as it relates to my life as a whole. Does that make sense? It does. It does. So kind of the, 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 the value add thing I think is big for that and who you're becoming. What yeah. is happening to your character yeah. as you pursue this to become the person that looks good to you, whatever that is for you. Um, and in the process of learning how to meal prep, staying disciplined yeah. with your hydration and your sleep and your workouts and everything else that goes in to becoming that person that um, ultimately is only going to accept excellence from yourself. Yeah. I think that's, that's part of it too. Awesome. I love it. What else we got here, Liz? Um, I got those notes we've got from Bedros gives us kind of an outline of what to talk about. Um, so stop negotiating with your goals. So it's not a trial run. Yeah. So is there a way to, in your mind, stop the negotiation? So it's not even a question. Yeah, right. I think that's where the, the discipline comes in, right? Where we're, um, we're focused. You have to push past how you feel right now. Because again, we're never always going to be motivated. Going back to day 200 um, and thinking about, you know, things getting stale and, and getting bored. Um, that's where you're really looking at it from a perspective of discipline and, and not doing maybe what you feel like <laughs> you know, is probably more more accurate. So um, looking instead at that longer term perspective, that longer term outcome and goal and working towards that instead of working from a place of how I feel and what I want most in this moment. I like it. Um, for me, doing that, what you said, starts with procrastination. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I've hit so many goals by procrastinating, but so we're all going to procrastinate on something. You're going to procrastinate on something. And if I start procrastinating on the small, little, unimportant tasks, that leaves me time for the big important stuff because the big import the big important stuff is the stuff that I have to start a task begun is halfway done a lot of times it's just me opening up a word document it's me just starting it's me doing a light little warm up which is going to get me into one of the best workouts I've ever had in my life and it's procrastinating on you know the the freaking whatever you know whatever it is that, that the busy work that I can try to busy myself with to not do whatever that daunting or hard thing is. So it's tackling the hard thing first, do the worst first, eating the frog, um, yeah. as Brian Tracy says, and leaving all the little stuff that's not all that important. Like um, I, this is one thing I'm guilty of, spending time with my kids. All right. I'll be like, oh, I got to get the dishes done. You know what? Fuck the dishes. The dishes have never grown up maladjusted because they didn't get enough time spent with them. And I don't think my kids are going to get maladjusted or anything, but, uh, <laughs> you know, or yeah. the laundry. It's something like, like Luke will want to, and, and, but then there's like big things, marketing that has to get done or sitting with Luke and building a Lego car. All right. So what's the opportunity cost there? And then I have to say, why do I want to build this business a to change lives and create a healthy lifestyle for my family and help them. So how am I like what my goal ultimately is, is sitting right here in front of me. Luke wants to build a Lego car with me so I can do that. I can stay up an hour later and get the marketing stuff done. Like it doesn't have to, if I have done my job properly and not left everything for the last minute, 
I have done that. So that's something now that I have to spend a little more time with or teaching my two older boys how to do a proper kettlebell swing instead of just doing them myself and, you know, instilling that, um, what am I, what am I trying to say here? The, the habits that I do or keeping the main thing, the main thing, I guess. Procrastination is what we were talking about. So making sure other stuff gets done, but when it needs to be done or there's not something much more important because getting the big important stuff done first is really empowering and makes it so much easier to do all that other little stuff. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think um, that there's you know, there's the, the decisions that we have to make that are just like internal, like the things that the struggles that will come up with ourselves and with our own motivation. But then to your point, there are very real things that will also come up that we can't just let by the wayside, go by the wayside. So we need to find that balance. Um, and, and, and again, go back to what is the, the end all be all goal. And there's things that still, you're not always going to be able to take the step immediately to your point that you need to towards your goal, but you need to be disciplined enough to then be able to circle back. And like you said, stay up that hour later and still get in the work. Um, that's going to ultimately get you towards your, your goals and your dreams and not just um, negotiate that away with yourself because not say this got in the way. So I can't do this either. You got to find that balance. Right. Right. And it goes with, with managing yourself. People talk about time management, which is a big crock. It's managing yourself yeah. and the decisions you make about, and that's a negotiation, what yeah. you're going to decide to do with the time that you have. Yeah. And a lot of it comes down to my, and I've showed you this before, my little secret weapon here, Yeah. which you can't, oh yeah, you can barely see it. I don't know. Something's funky going, my journal. All right. So if I am, if I'm waking up first thing in the morning and making my list of what I have to do, I'm already behind the eight ball. That should have happened. I should, and, and, and it, it takes 10 minutes. Liz, it takes yeah. 10 minutes before I go to bed to sit down, open up to tomorrow's page and say, what are the big rocks for tomorrow? What has to get done first? And put that down. And that way, something funny happens when you do that. I wake up with ideas and solutions and all that stuff that I, for the next day. So my mind while I'm sleeping already goes into next day's work mode. So yeah. I can wake up and be like, oh, here's what the next chapter is going to be revolving around. Here's what, you know, here's how I'm going to organize that marketing scheme or whatever it is that I have to do. And a lot of times I don't, I do the bootcamp programming, a lot of times, sometimes I will just put together my own stuff and just, it'll, I'll wake up and be like, oh, that's what I'm going to do today because I haven't used that muscle group yet. So your mind's always working, but a lot of times when we're sleeping, it's subconscious. So 10 minutes of, or one minute of planning will save 10 minutes of execution. So I guess the point is have your plan of attack laid out for the next day. Yeah. Definitely. What helps you with uh, staying on task and organized? Um, definitely planning. I'm definitely someone that needs to um, break things down into to smaller steps. Oh yeah, I've seen oh. your notebook. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I love your note. Like that's your like. I call it Liz's master plan. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I guess I'm a person who can get very easily overwhelmed. So that's a um, definitely a 
um, route that I've had to be very mindful. And I still, every day I have to be mindful of it. If it's the same thing to your point, like if for some reason the night before I miss that important, really important step of, of, you know, taking the 10 minutes and setting up the framework for the next day of what I want to get done. Like my, just naturally my personality, I'll kind of just go into a tailspin and it's almost can get to the point, like you said, where it's, it's like all or nothing. I'm just like, okay, my morning's, you know, gone awry because I didn't start the night before, like I should have. So I can, I, I can very real, it's very real for me that I could have a tendency to just let everything else just go by the wayside with that all or nothing mentality. And it's, you know, whatever happens, happens. So that's something that me knowing my personality, I have to be very deliberate about is breaking things out into smaller steps so that they're less overwhelming. It feels really good to me to be able to like check things off of my to-do list, even if they're multiple, multiple components of the same overall task. That's um, just the, the way that works best for me in my, yeah. I, I like that. I'm the same way. Um, because it, and that's not the first time I've heard that. And that's something definitely worth talking about because a lot of people starting in the gym or starting a big project or starting a new job or starting a business or whatever it is they want to get started on are procrastinating because it's just, it looks like such a huge thing to them from the outside that they're afraid to just get started. They don't know where to start. And like all that, like it's the old analogy of eating an elephant, like, holy crap, I got to eat this elephant. Where do I start? It's like one bite yeah. at a time. It's just doing one little, and, and for me, what it is, and I'll, I, I don't know if I, I talked about this. I, I can't remember, maybe happy hour or something, but, um, I had that, that, that split second feeling of overwhelm where we're running like hell to get the gym open. Okay. So, or just, just get in a place where we can start to open and start the build out. So getting the, getting the fun, you know, the financing. And I always kept telling myself, well, I'll be happy when, you know, I'll be happy when we finally get the financing all squared away. And I'll be happy when we get the actual franchise agreement squared away and the rights to this territory. And I'll be happy when we get this and that and the other thing. So finally, like we're, we're going through the whole process and I get the keys to the gym. All right. Pay less. And I walk in and it's all just metal shelving. And there's like, I'm like, holy shit, what have I gotten myself into? What the hell do I do now? <laughs> like I, and I had members signed up. I mean, I had started selling memberships before we even had, and that's one of those risks you take, just take action. All right. And usually it's, uh Oh, are you guys frozen? Can you guys hear me? Okay, good. It was breaking up, but yeah, there we go. Um, it's for me, it's, it's taking a series of imperfect actions. Yeah. that turn into because a lot of times we're afraid of making mistakes. We're afraid of yeah. failure. That's what I've, um, where I've always heard, at least that resonated with me the most, is that procrastination comes from fear, from yeah. not fear of failure, I guess. So being afraid to take those little steps because you're afraid of, of, of failing in some way. So yeah, definitely. Not All to Right. <laughs> no, no, that's that's perfect because uh, fear, and I think this is a good thing to talk in, to talk about because a lot of times fear, that little devil on our shoulder in that negotiation, is preaching fear, yeah. unwarranted false evidence appearing real, F E A R. So how do we overcome fear? Well, one thing was action. All right. I walked in, I said, well, we can't work out with all these metal shelves all over the freaking place. So, you know, I might as well just start taking them out and collecting them up and get them the hell out of here. So that was like action overcomes so much fear. Um, another one, I think a uh, technique that I like to use to overcome fear and help win that negotiation is 
looking at the facts. Like what are the actual real facts? Um, not the facts I hope or the facts I think or the facts that I want, but what is really happening here in this situation? I think once you can stop and take a deep breath and really look at facts, that then alleviates any opinions that come into play with that whole thing. That, but before, I wanna circle back though, because sometimes there's, there's, there's two kinds of fear. There's fear that is healthy, like, um, you know, I, I would say I have a fear of jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. Yeah. That, 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 that would scare the crap out of me. Okay. Because I have a fear of jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. Okay. And that's <laughs> rational. I mean, why would you jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Um, <clears throat> fair enough. But that's more of a healthy respect for gravity, I would say. Yeah. You know, um, I have a respect for oncoming traffic when I'm running on the road. I have a respect for, um, you know, just th certain things. But then there's that irrational fear is what we're talking about here. So that's that's kind of the the little devil is the fear on our shoulder, really talking, whispering in our ear. And it might be saying things like, oh, you know, remember the time you failed before? Or it might be whispering things like, um, oh, what's everyone going to think? What happens if you fail? You know, because fear of failure is a real thing. There's also fear of success. Yeah. What if you start a business and everybody wants what you have and you can't service them? You can't take care of them. Um, you know, the fear of success can be, you know, people, and that's a self-esteem thing that goes to the kind of, you know, how we were raised or what, what are the belief systems ingrained in our heads and in our, our, our belief system about ourselves and what we perceive we deserve. And a lot of people get stuck in a rut. Everybody deserves the best of everything yeah. if they're willing to get after it and work for it and do what it takes to get it. And that's my opinion. Um, thoughts on that Liz I got two other two other things about overcoming fear but what do you, what do you think so far about um yeah no um going back to like one of the things that I when I'm feeling fearful I guess of something like at the end of the day like you said there's two types of fear and you have to think of it is my is the fear that I'm having is it a real true fear of of like you said something that's going that you're protecting yourself from something that's truly going to happen is a fact that could happen you could get hit by a car you could or is at the, is your fear a thought your your fear can just be a thought of that's where kind of the fear of failure comes in that even if you do fail at something what is it that you're actually you know what is it that's happening you're not it's not a life or death situation typically if you if you fail at something so you're you have to get to that underlying um premise of that thought of why you're having that fear i love yes you just triggered a thought um what you just said and it's kind of like the what have you got to lose mm -hmm. is in <clears throat> So try it. And Jack Canfield in his book, The Success Principles, puts a really good uh, analogy out there. Uh, not an analogy, but just a, a thing out there where you don't have it now. Right. So let's say you want to try something, um, a new sport or whatever it is, you know, go after pursue some career. All right. You're not in that career now. Right. So you already know how to deal with that. Right. So let's say you try that. It doesn't work out. You're no worse off than you were before. Right. And perhaps maybe you even learned some things through that process. So, <clears throat> so step out and, and take that chance um, in an intelligent way. Right. In a, in a smart, intelligent way, you know, calculated, but, that that goes on to the next thing where <clears throat> I think one of the best ways to overcome fear also besides 
taking action and looking at the facts is seek wise counsel. Pretty much anything that anything you most anybody wants to do, unless you're Elon Musk. And even in that case, there's people that have done, but anyone, anything that you want to do, someone has probably done before successfully and has either written a book about it, put a seminar together about it or an audio program or has a coaching program, or there's a support group or some kind of club that, is in you know focuses on what it is you want to do um so i think it's finding people surrounding yourself with other people that are doing what you want to be doing and learning from them and because i mean experience is a great teacher but i think what's better than that is other people's experience if you can learn from your own mistakes that's great but if you can learn from someone else's mistakes and avoid the same mistake that's even better that's <laughs> that's sometimes worth millions I mean, um less opportunity cost a lot less opportunity cost so i think having mentors and guides and coaches and things like that um i mean we're coaches Liz, so you know i mean people come to us for guidance because they want to do something. And, and I think a lot of times what a coach does is they'll hold you accountable to that as well. So having someone that can help hold you accountable. Um, when I wrote, when I wrote the first draft of my book, um, maximize your college experience, I had someone that was checking in on me twice a week to say, what, how come you didn't send me the section you said you were going to send? And I'm like, oh shit, you know what? They're really gonna hold my feet to the fire. And that that that's motivation. Having those check-ins um, are are hugely beneficial and uh, finding those uh, those guides. Yeah. Oh, hey, can you go? I'll be done in just a few minutes. No. Go find Timmy. It's one of those opportunity costs. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We got a fun day planned though. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Whoa. Where does the time oh, go? Yeah, we are true. 47 minutes into this already. I do want to kind of talk. I, I went live last night, but, um, some people may not have seen it. Uh, I also want to add those announcements. So we have a six week challenge starting on the 18th, May 18th six week challenge leading up to that starting today is the 28 days of fitness challenge, which we're going to start instilling those habits, the hydration, nutrition, mindset, and everything that go along with getting after it in a serious way for a six week challenge before spring gets here. And, um, I love six weeks is my favorite time domain for a challenge because it is fast and furious and intense and it's easier in my opinion to stay focused for six weeks rather than eight or 10. Um, and I've seen some amazing results from people in six weeks in the past. So I'm, I'm super excited about this. Plus we are rolling out our new technology, um, a new app that we're gonna be using um, which we'll cover, we'll, we'll start doing some trainings on the coaches and myself. We're all getting really good with the app right now, immersing ourselves in it. And anyone in the six week challenge member or non-member um, is going to start with that app because we are going to have, it's going to be an awesome way to communicate directly with your coach. Um, you're going to have your nutrition plan right on that app, your biometrics, meaning your weight, body fat percentage, all that stuff. Um, and it, oh, careful. It's going to also pair with any wearable technology you have, uh, Apple watch, um, as well as the Fitbit. I actually begrudgingly ordered a Fitbit for myself. <laughs> And I've been avoiding it. I used to be huge into all that heart rate monitor and Garmin and all that stuff when I was running and doing triathlons and stuff. And I kind of like, I, I just go by perceived how I feel. 
but I am going to learn the technology so I can get good at it and help explain it to other people. And it's, you know, I'm kind of excited to, to get back into that and learn something new. Awesome. Uh, it's also going to sync with my fitness pal and the Fitbit nutrition tracking program. Um, so if you use either one and I've used my fitness pal, my whole tracking career, I'm going to start using Fitbit from what I understand. It's a much easier platform to track from. So we're going to be learning that we're going to roll that out. And, um, hopefully by the end of that, I'm not making any promises, but we'll be able to start working our way back to the gym, but that'll yeah. be uh well, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> But either way, um, it is what it is, but it will be whatever we decide to make of it. Liz, any closing thoughts? Um, no, I'm really excited about the app and, and the challenge. So um, I, I think, uh, yeah, really, really great things on the horizon. Um, new, new tools that we have to make sure that we're not negotiating our goals away keep uh, help keep us accountable help keep us motivated and disciplined so yeah good thing on our way i'm excited too um remember fear false evidence appearing real most of the time that negotiation is the lack of a long-term vision and going with the instant gratification as opposed to the delayed gratification, which is huge, and or fear. Yeah. Talking to you, that, that little uh, devil on your shoulder, whispering nonsense into your ear that you're not worth it, you're not worthy, you shouldn't try. That's, um, that's where I think is a good place to leave this off. So I will, um, I'm gonna put this onto our YouTube channel apparently it's not a youtube station i called it a youtube station and my 14 13 and 14 year old laughed to stare at <laughs> dad what's not a youtube station what is this 1980 <laughs> like jeez i watched my favorite youtube program i like dad it's not a YouTube. <laughs> my grandmother used to watch her program <laughs> So, stories, their stories too, right? That's what my grandma used to, to call her stories. Yeah, oh, you watch, you watch my stories on TV. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Rachel, thanks for joining us today. I yeah. Hope it's beneficial. I hope other people are finding this beneficial as well. Um, I, starting next week, oh, go ahead, sorry. I love doing this. Yeah, me too. It's fun. Um, too. So we're going to keep it going. And then starting next week, we'll be we'll be um, announcing live the the winner. The weekly winner, that. yes. Yeah. Oh shit, that's the other. That's one thing I forgot. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. So if you haven't found it already, there's the bingo sheet. Um, it's been emailed to you, and it is also yes. Rachel's got it yeah. right there. Beautiful. Um, you're gonna check off your daily challenge, and everyone who follows that we're going to pick uh one winner per week that's going to win a free true lean fit body supplement um that we will buy and have sent to your house and that's uh that's going to be t the 28 days taking us up to the six week challenge the daily directive will be looking a little bit different so the daily directive will still have yesterday's link but it will just have the challenge um on it of whatever today is. So we're moving from the daily directive to the daily challenge. And then that's going to take us right into the six week challenge where there'll be a whole bunch of other assets coming out for you guys on a uh, daily and, and, and bi daily basis. Awesome. That is it. My friends, you guys have an awesome day. Thank you so much for, uh, you. for being here and I will talk to you guys. Rachel. Yes. You got something you want to add? No. Oh. I just want to say have a good day, guys. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, you're Thank very you welcome. Guys. Thanks for Thanks tuning for in. Us. And we are approaching the top of the hour. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to say. <laughs>
<laughs> makes it feel so official. But we'll talk soon, guys. Have an awesome day and kick ass this week. Keep being awesome, guys. Keep up the good work. We'll talk soon. Take care, everyone. Adios. Bye.